I have done a first video about the new DJI R2S, more specifically about its video capabilities versus the Mavic Air 2, and I was extremely impressed. I will put a link at the end of this one. But I know many of you are really interested in photography, so in this one I will do an in-depth analysis of the still image quality of the R2S in all different light conditions using all the available functionalities. There will be a lot of interesting stuff, so I will analyze the panorama and hyperlapse modes in other specific videos. If you like the video, don't forget to hit the like button. It really helps boost my confidence. Regarding photography, the huge new feature of the Earth 2S is the new 1 inch sensor with a 20 megapixel resolution. The specs of this sensor are the same as the one of the Mavic 2 Pro, and this model was miles ahead of other Mavic models in terms of photography, even though the Mavic Air 2 has partly bridged the gap. The bigger size of the sensor should give improved performance in low light and in high dynamic range situations. The Mavic 2 Pro has been released three years ago, which is a geological era in terms of drone technology. Both the Mavic Air 2 and the Mini 2 have a host of much improved features, so I expect the Air 2S, with the same sensor size and resolution, to at least match the quality of the 2 Pro or possibly do better. Some people might argue that the Mavic Air 2 has a 48 megapixel sensor, but it is mostly a marketing gimmick. The half an inch quad Bayer sensor of the Air 2 is 12 megapixels that can be split into four smaller ones. The photography performance is remarkable, but it still is a 12 megapixel sensor. The photography modes available in the Air 2S are the same as in the previous model. Besides the single shot, there is the same smart photo mode, which works in different ways according to the situation. In high dynamic range it takes several shots to operate a sort of in-camera merge to HDR. In low light, again it takes several photos to optimize exposure and reduce the amount of noise. In other situations it acts as a scene recognition. The automatic exposure bracketing works in the same way as in the Air 2 and the 2 Pro, with a choice of 3 or 5 photos at an interval of 0.7 stops of exposure to merge them to HDR. It is a very useful mode, but it would be preferable if the interval between each shot was larger. Other modes are burst shot to take a chosen amount of photos in rapid succession useful for action or sport events, and time shot, useful for time lapses. In top-down shots we take the sky out of the equation, therefore the dynamic range is very low and we can concentrate on detail and color. In this image there is plenty of fine detail in the vegetation, and the detail is really well preserved. Even when zooming quite deeply, there is no loss of detail and not a hint of noise. If you look at the edges, the image holds well with still quite good detail and no evident distortion. As expected, the 20 megapixel sensor leaves plenty of room for cropping and reframing. After a heavy crop, there is no evident loss of resolution. Let's see how far we can go with cropping with the same image taken from a higher altitude. This is a very heavy crop, and the image is still usable, at least for the web. The hour before sunrise is a good test for color rendition. The shadows can be very dark and bluish, noise can appear and detail can be lost. In all these images I find that the rendition of the colors with the r 2s is a thing of beauty. The detail is astonishing and the noise very contained. Even when shooting against the direction of the sun, the image holds up very well, 
with just some loss of detail and some noise in the deep shadows if we zoom in. To me, it's already clear that the R2S regarding photos is in another league compared to the original Mavic R2 and of course the Mini 2. The only model that can take the fight is the 2 Pro. Let's get a bit tough and move to an area where a drone in general tends to struggle. High dynamic range situations. With drones, most of the time we face some kind of HDR situation, as a good portion of the sky is generally in the frame. The closer we aim toward the direction of the sun, the higher the dynamic range. Until a few years ago, I used to say that with a drone I would never shoot phasing south. I used to keep the sun always behind me, because the results in high dynamic range used to be quite horrible. Let's see the R2S in action. This is a typical moderate drone image with high dynamic, although not extreme. The sun is on the left of the image and the sky is obviously much brighter than the element on the ground. For the R2S these situations are a piece of cake. The structure of the sky is excellent and the color rendition is a thing of beauty. Astonishing detail and not an inch of noise. Let's move to more extreme HDR. The sun is in front of us before sunset, almost in the frame, and the area on the left is extremely dark. Anytime I tried this kind of shots with other drones, there was always plenty of noise creeping up and an horrible flare. With R2S the detail is astonishing and again no noise at all. This time part of the sun is in the shot. And with the drone this usually translates in an image with huge flare, chromatic aberrations and a lack of saturation and detail in the area of the image close to the sun. Again, the Earth 2 s has everything under control. The structure of the sky is perfectly preserved. DJI must have done something serious to the lens, as the usual problem of drones against the sun are nowhere to be seen. In the SRS, the full sun is in the shot, and the result is, in my opinion, superb. I really like the colors. As mentioned above, there is an automatic exposure bracketing mode similar to the other models. I use it in most cases with five shots, but mostly I use it to make sure that I don't accidentally get a badly exposed shot. With the Mavic Air 2 and 2 Pro, in most situations of high dynamic range, I would merge the five images in Lightroom, and this technique gives me a clearly better result. But with the Air 2S, the results obtained with a single image are so good that I very rarely need to merge in Lightroom. So far I have the impression that the 2S is mile ahead of any prosumer drone that I test. To me, it is actually closer to a full sensor DSLR or mirrorless camera. I will soon do a face-to-face -face video with the Mavic 2 Pro, but in the meantime you can have a look at my video about photography with the Mavic 2 Pro compared to the Nikon D850 by clicking on this link. It has great images of Taormina in Sicily. And don't forget to hit the like button in both videos if you like them. This is another area where drones traditionally seriously struggle, due to their tiny sensor. Until a couple of years ago I would simply keep the ISO value at its base level at all times. Let's start with this image, very tricky as it is pitch black dark. There is some artificial light in the village in the foreground, but also plenty of dark shadows in the clouds and on Mount Etna. This is a situation where any of my other drones stays in the bag and I reach for my queen of the dark, the Nikon D850. With the R2S at ISO 400, the result is hard to believe. We get an excellent overall luminosity, 
perfect detail even in the shadows and hardly any noise. Just unbelievable. At ISO 800, things are almost the same, but just a bit better, with even more detail and less noise in the shadows. And the best of the three is the one shot at ISO 1600. ISO 1600 with a drone. Are you kidding me? If someone showed me these images and asked me how they were taken, I certainly would not mention a drone. And now an even more difficult setting. It is extremely dark, with some very strong lights far away. Very difficult to keep them under control and to avoid bad flares. Again, the quality of the images at ISO 400, 800 and 1600 with the Air 2S is beyond belief. But there is also another trick. The Mavic 2 Pro has introduced a function called Hyperlight. In low light situations, the camera takes several shots in rapid succession with high ISO values and then merge them together in order to reduce the noise. This function looked promising and it was improved in the Mavic Air 2, although it is now contained in the Smart Photo mode. Here are the two previous low light photos shot in Smart mode. As you can see, the result is excellent and can at times be better than the normal single shots. The thing is that IISO photo taken with the Mavic 2 are so good that the hyperlight mode is not needed much anymore. The Air 2S is certainly not an incremental upgrade, but rather a quantum leap, much closer to full sensor camera territory than to prosumer drones. Click on this icon to watch my video about the photography with the Mavic 2 Pro, or here if you want to see how the Air 2S fares in video. And don't forget to hit the like button if you like this video. Bye for now.